many languages have a structure that's called an array. And an array in, in these languages um, it is, it, it aggregates data. So one can put numerous data elements, I'll call them, uh, into one variable and then access those vari those individual elements at a later time through one variable name. Uh, in Python, this kind of structure is called a collection, and Python has uh, four different versions of uh, collectors, I'll call them, I guess. Uh, so four, four different versions of an array. Um, that each of them very similar, uh, but they, they each do have their own unique properties and characteristics. So I'll cycle through each of them. There are lists, tuples, sets, and dictionaries. Right? So there are four very similar structures, but each have their own qualities. So let's get started right off with, uh, I'll just jump in and do it by example. Uh, I'll start with lists. And uh, by the way, I will try to, I'm not going to try, I'm going to do a separate video for each of these collections so that I can try. <laughs> this is what I'm going to try to do, keep the videos somewhat short. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. All right, so here on my phone, I have created a function, my own function. Uh oh. Going on here. Ah, I'm looking at the wrong screen. Here it is. All right. I've created my own function here. Um, I've defined my own function. Uh, I made this name up. I made the function up. The number of functions have a, a colon and then the body of the function. Uh, all of this stuff is in the body, and the body of the function is all indented. Right? That's how Python can tell that these are parts of the body of the function. So when this function gets called by name, and its name is my list function, which I would call from the bottom window, or from another function, I can use another function to call this function if I wanted. But I just set this up for an easy way to uh, to show how to create and work with a list. Um, so I'll call it from, from the bottom window. Uh, the first thing we do is a couple. I have a couple of comments here because these are some of the characteristics that are that we're going to have to watch out for as we as we look through the different the four different kinds of uh, collections here in Python. Um, one important characteristic that we want to keep an eye on is whether or not. Let me start by by with the with the declaration of one of these collections. This particular one is a list. I'm creating a list. The fact that then my variable name that I made up is my list. Right? I could have said Boyer's list. I could have said anything I wanted. And I assigned to that this structure here. Right? The fact that this structure is a comma-separated list of things, we'll say, we'll say the objects, comma-separated list of objects, and that comma-separated list is wrapped in square brackets. That is what signifies that this is a list object. Right? So we can think of this as an object in and of itself. Right? And uh, when I say object, what I mean really is a data type. Right? Like, uh, like we know this seven here, this first, everything in an object-oriented language is an object. <laughs> and oftentimes there's objects inside of objects. Um, we, this is not uncommon in, in regular life for us. So your car object uh, is comprised of or made up of tire objects and wheel objects and an engine object which is made up of itself many objects, right? There's a carburetor or a fuel injector object, there's a spark plug object, right? So this, this is a very natural way to think of things uh, in an object-oriented sense. So it's kind of like what we have here is, you know, I mean, I could make a better example that would, would illustrate this, what I'm about to say, a little better. But it's like this is the car object, and here is one of the sub-objects, right? So this whole object is a list object, and it is the, it has the type, the data type, 
um, list. So this is a, is, a, is a real object, I mean, sorry, a, a real data type in Python. Um, and seven here, as we know, is an integer object. Right? And so if I, and we can do this in a second, we're gonna do a little bit of it. Uh, we can see that the type of that object, we can ask it, what, what type is this object? We can ask the interpreter. And it will tell us, oh, that's an int. We could ask, what type is this object? And the interpreter will say, well, that's a string. We can ask, what type is this object? And the interpreter will say, that's a list object. Okay? So, and here we, I'm about to do it, right here. <laughs> Sorry, right, right there. Uh, so, uh, what, I'm, what I've done here is created this object. This is the object, right? I told you the characteristics that make this a list object. The square brackets and a comma separated list. That's inside of here. A comma separated list of objects, right? So even if I wanted a list of one element, I'm still gonna need to get a comma in there. I just like to throw that in there. So even if I, oh, my whole list had only a seven in it, I would type it open square bracket, seven, comma, close square bracket because the interpreter is going to need to see that comma in order to be able to ver uh, recognize this as being uh, a list object. Because without the comma, it's not a list of anything, right? It's just one thing. So kind of maybe think of it that way. So now I've named it my list. And so now I can access my list just by using that word, my list. Just like I, I could create a variable called uh, price and assign to it five, then I could, I, could, I could access that five using the variable price. So this is the same way. I've created a new variable. It's just that it holds my list, called my list. It's just that it holds a list object instead of a, as we've done before, a, an integer object or a string object or a boolean object, or whatever it's holding. That's what it's going to be. So let's just see. Let's see if, if what I'm saying is right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send to the printer. Print is a built-in function. And it prints to this bottom screen down here, which I already have run it, you can tell. So let's, let's clear that. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send to the print object whatever the results of this are. Right? And so now, in order to be able to, before we can send anything to print, first this has to be evaluated. The in, what's inside the parens has to be evaluated. So now it's a call to another function called type. Right? And to type, I'm going to send my list. Now what type does, type is a built-in function as well. Type returns the, the data type whatever you send it. So we could do type paren seven paren and it's going to return int. Right? Um, because seven is an integer. Now I guess I could uh, interject here for one moment that in in Scheme when we were working with Dr. Racket, Scheme didn't have an int data type um, but in, in many other languages the number of data type that Steve uses is broken into smaller pieces, more detail. So, yeah, seven is a number, right? So is 7.2, it's a number. And in Scheme, those are all just numbers. But here in Python and many other languages, we want to know a little bit more about that number. It's not just a number, it's a, it's a kind of number, it's an integer. And a, a 7.2 is, is not an integer, right? But it, it's a it's like a, a number with a decimal point in it, and so they, that's called a float. And if the decimal portion of this number gets to be large, that is, the precision of the number increases um, to a rather large amount, then we're going to call that kind of a number. Its data type will be double, right? And we know boolean data type is true false, right? and uh, we've got strings ints, floats, doubles, boolean, and now we have list. It's just another one, right, in this, in this uh, 
in this language. So we're going to we're gonna we're ask type to return what type this is. That's what type does. It returns the type. So I'm expecting that it's going to return list, right? And then, so that's what we would do is replace this in our thinking process here. We're going to replace this whole call with the results of the call. So the results of the call should be list, or however, however uh, this interpreter is going to tell us this type. Right? He's going to send back the answer to this question. And then we're going to print that answer down at the, the bottom. And then I'm going to just attempt to print, send to the printer my list. All right. So it, I, the whole list I'm going to send to the printer and I'll see what it, what, it, what it prints out for us. And then I'm going to send um, to the printer the results of this call, which is a call to the len function, which will tell me the length of whatever sent to it. And in this case, I'm sending it a list. So I'm hoping it's going to send me back, it's going to return the number of elements in this list. So that would be the length. And there are seven, right? The count. One, two, three, four, five, six, or six. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess that seven sitting there is making me think seven. So there are six elements here. So I hope that we're going to see, and I bet we will, uh, that we're going to see the results of this call is going to be, there are not seven, that's what this calls me to do. There's six, let's fix that. There's six elements. First one being the integer seven. It's called minus, right. Okay, so that's the third thing we're going to do. And then, let's hold off on all of this. I'm going to just comment this out so we don't get too heavily encumbered with stuff. Is there anything else down there? Yeah. So we know when I comment things out, the interpreter is going to ignore them, right? So it's the interpreter doesn't see any more code other than the things that are not comment. So let's, uh, let's do this so that those comments go into action. Come down here. I, I saw a minute ago. I ran this already. So that's how I'm going to make a call to the function. I'm going to use the function's name and open paren close paren. Notice that when I define the function, I had to have a colon at the end of the definition because the function definition should include a body, right? But the call, I'm not going to rewrite all the code every time I call it. I expect it to run its code, right? So that's how we can tell the difference between what a function definition is. Not to mention the fact that it starts with the word def, def, but also that there's a colon at the end of uh, a function definition. And, and so this can't, this thing I have written here, can't possibly be a function definition. Right? It must, it could only be a function call. So the interpreter doesn't have a problem with that. And so let's see what our output is. So the interpreter tells us that for this right here, the, print, the fact that it's down there shows us the print marks, right? So what was the result of this? It's the result of that call right there that gets printed. So that's what's listed here. So the interpreter tells us, oh, the type of this is class list. So class is another word that we'll use a lot, or you'll, you'll hear a lot in uh, object-oriented programming language. A class is like a blueprint for an object. So the object itself is a list, and it's created uh, when, we, when we write up the blueprint for what one of these objects look like. We call that a class. So it's the interpreter saying this is an object that came from that class, class uh, list. All right, and then I said, okay, well, can you print the list? All right, and so this is what was returned. Now the interpreter is sending it to us like that um, so that we, we can see actually from printing my list I can tell just by looking at it that this is a list object right and how do I know it well I see a comma separated list of elements that are surrounded by square brackets that's what a list looks like 
And so, I, I really, what I'm saying, I guess, is I really didn't need this. I, I could tell just by looking at it. All right? And then I said, okay, now, what's the length of my list? Can you print that out for me? And we just counted out that there are six elements, and it tells me that there's six. Six elements. All right, so we know there are six elements, and as humans, as we're speak, we think of things as the first, and we use like the seven that's in this list here. Um, we think of that as the first one. Well, they're numbered inside the machine, and they, the numbering begins with zero, and this numbering is called an index. So that's, even though we call it the first element, its index is zero. The next element, would be the second element has an index of one and so on. So the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, make sure I get this right again. <laughs> I have six elements. The last index is five. Okay, so it was the indexes run from zero to five in this list. Um, the elements run from one to six. So it's just two different ways of kind of looking at it. Um, up, up, up. So what I want to do is, and what I can do with that, and the reason why that's important, is let's say I just want to know what is the first element. Right? I'm trying to get a reply to seven. Right? I want it to say, oh, seven is the, the, the first element. So I say, okay, my list zero, what is print? Print what? is contained in my list at index zero. That's a good way to say it. All right? So um, what I could do to clean this up a little so we don't get too much going on here. It's not that there's that much going on, but let's just eliminate all this stuff. Uh-oh, can't do that. If I do that, I won't even have a list. So, so there we go. I won't do this. Let's get rid of some of this printing so we don't have too much printing on it. All right, so we're gonna just print the first element, which has index zero. And we see that the first element is seven. That's all I have to do. If I want to look at some other ones, I could, I could do the second, uh, which would, second element would be index one, right? Do this, and bubble. And we'll see that the second element is CISC101. All right, so enough of that. Now what I wanted to do, and I was going to do three, but that's okay. I did one instead right there. Well, I, let me change it back so that I can use this again. Minus one, minus three, I'm going to do that. Um, oh, now we know the... Uh, the type of the entire thing object here. This object is a type list. But how about the individual elements? Could we find out what the type of the elements are? I can I can ask, I can send to type that element, that individual element, right, by using its index. So I'm sending it the seven. I'm saying what type is seven? Right, let me do this. Now, I may not necessarily know that there's a seven there, right? That's what we do because we kind of have insider information. We're the people programming this right now. We, we, we wrote, we made it, we created it. So we know. So it's class int, and it uses the same style of, of, of reporting, you know, right? Where it says uh, in, in, in angle brackets, this is type class int. All right. So, and, and uh, just to verify here, we'll just do another one of these. Because we're gonna. What do we expect here? I'm looking at the second element now, right? This one. It's this 101 again. So now I'm expecting it to return class str. Just gonna be string. Do this, and then. Oh. To the class SDR. All right, we're getting there. 
So I access an individual element in the list using its index. Okay. Now in this case, I'm asking what I'm trying to retrieve the element, right? But I can also use the index to overwrite the element or to assign to it. So this is what's important here to think about. We're going to do this. I'm trying to assign the, the string changed. And there's the assignment operator, right? Remember, the assignment operator works from right to left. And the assignment operator is not a relational operator. We're not asking here if there's equivalence, right? We're not saying, is the contents of my list index zero equivalent to change? That's not what we're saying. If that's what we were trying to say, we would do this. That's what equals equals means. Equals equals <laughs> is looking at that relationship. Are these two things the same? Equals is the assignment operator. It's saying put whatever is on the right hand side, the right hand operand, to this operator, into the left hand operand. And it always goes right to left. Right? So we can't reverse that. It's always going to go right to left. So I'm trying to take change and place it into this location. So in other words, I'm trying to replace 7 with change. Okay? So uh, we already know that there was a 7 in there. We saw it right here. right? And we saw proof of that right here. It printed a 7. So we know there's a 7 there. And we wrote it there. So, I mean, we have multiple ways of knowing that there's a 7 there. That's how we created the list and we placed it there explicitly. And then we had it printed out right here. And what was in that spot? Well, 7, for sure. Now I'm modifying it. And now I'm going to print it out again. Should we get rid of some of these prints? So we don't get too, too many things going on again. Okay, so we'll just stick with the only things that are going to happen here are, um, yes, this is going to get created. My list is going to get created and initialized to this list. And then I'm going to modify the element located at index 0. And then we're going to print it and see. And what I expect and hope is going to happen, I'm sure it will, is we're going to see change instead of 7 like we did. Okay, let's do it. trying to steal one of the bits of code that we used earlier. Oh, this is the one I want. All right, and we're going to do this. Look right under here. I want to see what's this type. Right? Look at that 5. Yeah, 5 came out of there. Right? This is what I placed in there. Did I place a string in there or an int in there? This looks like an int. What do you think is going to happen? What, what is the type? Oh, it's not going to tell me anything right because I've got the wrong index here. Now, oh. so we're looking at, at, at index zero, right? So, yeah. All right. 
Kennedy nem lett szülő, igen. Five, but it's an STR. Now let's do this. Five, this. Wow. Boom. Look. It looks the same. Well, the five looks the same. Now in Dr. Rackett, when we were using that, uh, the five would have come out with quotes around it. And so it would have told us right there, kind of, that, that that's a string. Here, when I see the five, I can't tell if it's a string or not. And now this is important because, you know, I can't do arithmetic operations on a string, right? If I'm trying to say five times two and I actually want multiplication, I can't have five being a string. <laughs> I need it to be an instrument. All right, so I don't want to go too far on that. But maybe you kind of get what I'm saying. So anyway, we have a little type. Oh my God, I had it sitting right there the whole time. Do you see that? That's the same line I just grabbed and put in there. All right. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so I think that's the end of the characteristics. Um, I'll, I'll quickly look at them again. It's okay, we could print them out. Let's notice that two of the elements are the same here. So this list has elements that are repeated, and that's legal, that's allowed in this one, right? You can have multiple of the same object in here, multiple instances of the same object. <coughs> I'm bringing it up because some of the, the ones we'll look at next, well, sets for instance, you can't have duplicates. Right? You can't be any duplicates. You could put them there, but it, it'll, it'll remove them. Right? And that's one of the features. Right? We, if we don't want duplicates, then we want to use a set as opposed to a list. So if we have duplicates, the list is ordered. Okay? And by that, what I mean is the order at which we created this list, when we defined it, the seven being the first element, the six 101 being the second, that order will be maintained. It seems like a no-brainer, but some of the other lists, um, and I believe it's, yeah, it's set in particular, will not maintain the order. You can't, there's no guarantee that if I were to print this, if this were a set and not a list, if I were to print it, I can't guarantee that it's going to print in the same order that I created it. Right? So I don't really know where those things are. I know that they're there. They're in there. They're in the set. We were looking for, we're going to see what it says. Just as I know they're in the list. But in the case of a set, when we look at that, uh, I, I can't guarantee they're in the same order that I put them in. <laughs> right? Right? And in a list, the elements are indexed and mutable. Right? I should add this too. And immutable, which means I can change them, I can modify them, right? And I modify them using the index. Okay? So pretty much I can do anything I want, and this is very similar. The one thing that's kind of different here in Python than others, uh, uh, than other programs, or other other languages, is that we can put different types of objects into the same collection. I was about to say array, because if it's an array, typically I'm not going to be able to do that. It would have to be an array, an array of integers, or an array of strings, or characters, or an array of floats, right? where all of the elements are the same type. Um, so this is something that Python allows, to have multiple different types in in uh, its array, which it calls a collection. Um, I guess I'll leave that at that. Uh, you want to throw some some of these topics we could we could you know, they, they're a whole chapter in and of themselves. So the fact that it can do that, uh, but that's that's uh, for a for a, a different class. Uh, 
So we'll just move on here. Now, here's, I, I have this here, we're not going to do anything with it, but I, I would like to mention that when I started this video, I said that this function that I created, while I'm, I've written it and I'm using it so that I can just type the same thing in over and over and just keep, it just keeps executing. Well, that's, that is one of the benefits of a function, right? The code's in there. It's, you know, it's kind of interesting that since I'm sitting here as the programmer, I can make modifications on the fly <laughs> to this code and then run it again. Typically, a user of this code wouldn't be doing that. They wouldn't have access to modify the function at all. Um, so I'm using it out of convenience here to show you how the, the, the list works. Um, typically, a user would just call the function and get whatever the function gives it, right? And so in that case, typically we wouldn't get a function most times, maybe 99% of the time we would not want to be printing things from the function. Because we don't know if the user of the function wants things printed or not, right? What we do is whatever we're supposed to do in the function, like there's some operation that we're trying to carry out, could be a, a, a mathematical operation that's a small part of, of a bigger mathematical calculation. <laughs> and so we wouldn't want the user to have to try and figure out how to stop from printing <laughs> from our code uh, some intermediate step in the, in the solution of a bigger problem that they're working with, right? What we would do is just return the value to them, to the user of the function. Whoever called the function is the user of the function. Um, and let them do what they want with it. If they want to print, print it. If they want to use it as a, a, another piece of the calculation that they're working with, then they can do that and then print the final result. Right? So generally speaking, uh, we wouldn't be printing things from the function unless it was a function that was built to be printing things, which is kind of what I'm doing here. Right? Uh, I'm just using it to make it easy to print and make modifications without having to have writing code all the time, I won't, you know, I just wouldn't be able to, it was convenient, that's all, I'm using it out of convenience right now, and that's typically the way we use functions, but they're just out of convenience, functions operate as a black box, we don't really necessarily, if we're the user of a function, we don't really care how it's getting its job done, right? somebody has put all the work and spent the time trying to figure out how to get this particular function to do whatever it does, Right, and we're just grateful <laughs> and thankful that someone has already written a body of code, like a module of code here, um, and wrapped it up and gave it a name so that we could now just call it and, and not have to go through the calculation all the time. Right? So, uh, and that's all I'm doing here. Right? It's just a convenience. So, function is always a convenience, a way of modularize and reuse code that's convenient. So what we would typically want the function to do at the end of this conversation here is return something, right? And that's what the return keyword does inside of a function. It returns both uh, control of execution. Here, I'm looking at this, and you're looking at me. There we go. It returns control of execution. So execution is this code is executing right here, right? So wherever that return is, it says, okay, go, go back to the caller, and if there's something in these parentheses, that gets sent back to the caller as well. So maybe this function, if it had a real purpose other than something instructional, it was doing something to that list. Maybe it created the list, and maybe it, it just doubled all the elements, right? So <coughs> that is, well, if they were, if they were numerical. <laughs> It just does two times every element and then sends the list back. So then when the, res the caller receives the list back, the caller would just see the results of the operation. Right? Because it would just now have the new list. It's been modified. It wouldn't, the caller wouldn't want all kinds of printing going on in the middle of that. Right? You can imagine. The caller just wants the results. 
He doesn't want to know anything else. It's what the results are. So uh, that's, that was a little bit of an aside, I know it had nothing to do with the list, but uh, maybe some insight into uh, when you're using functions, but how we want to kind of uh, contain ourselves <laughs> inside of a function and always be thinking of the fact that there's someone else who's going to be using this today, who do they want to see with this function? And the function, one last thing I'll mention about functions, they should be as specific as possible, right? If you're creating a function that can um, calculate the square root of something, then uh, you shouldn't be doing anything other than calculating the square root, right? Because a, a user of that function is going to be using it for a one reason. We don't want to do 16 different things. It's going to be wanted, the factorial, right? So if we're going to, if we're going to send back the square root and the factorial, that doesn't make any sense to the user of the function. Why? They're going to be asking, why, do I, why am I getting this? I asked for the, the square root function to tell me what the square root is, and it's telling me the square root and the factorial. Right? It doesn't make any sense. So we always want to keep our functions as fine-grained as possible. They're focused on one thing and one thing only. If there's something else that needs to be done, they create another function, right? It's better to have more functions that do precise things. And printing is not one of the things that they typically <laughs> are gonna do, although we could have a printing function. Typically, whatever operation's happening, we're not gonna be looking to print it. We just wanna return the, nobody wants to know how you can calculate the square root, right? They just want the answer. <laughs> just send the answer back. So that's what the return does. All right, good enough on that. Next, I will do uh, the next collection in um, in Python, which is called a tuple. Right, so collection number two. And, and you already know a good deal of how to work with it. Uh, so maybe the next one can. Uh, maybe I'll achieve my goal and actually have a sure video. Let's see how that goes. See you in the next one. Oh, here's the